Our journey to climb the Altavia No. 4 in Italy's mighty Dolomite Mountains began with a short flight to Venice's Marco Polo Airport. A couple of bus rides later and we were close to our starting point in San Candido. Across Europe, peppered throughout its most famous mountain trails, you'll find mountain huts separating major stages. These vary in style and size but offer a great way to travel light through the mountains. In Italy, they're called refugios, and we plan to use them during this trip. The next morning, the trail began with a valley walk into a long ascent to Refugio Locatelli. This was our first taste of the stunning views we were to see as we made our way along the Alta Via. After a couple of fine Italian espressos, we continued on to the next refugio. We were soon greeted with steeper slopes and the first section of Via Ferrata. Using a specialized harness, climbers are able to make their way around sharp, steep slopes by clipping into metal wires that run along the mountain's face. You get to experience a mix between rock climbing and scrambling and are able to see the mountains from a unique perspective. So it's, it's about 6 p.m. And we've been walking, climbing now since nine o'clock this morning. Um, so it's been a good nine hours. And we've just finished two hours of, of Via Ferrata climbing for the first time ever, which was terrifying and exhilarating. Um, and it's basically been, we've just wrapped around that entire mountain you can see in the background. Um, so kind of up, up from the top there, maybe on the side of the frame and, and all the way down and along here. And I've just come down the path and now I'm going into the valley. Um, Cameron's miles ahead of me, I don't know where he is, um, so we've, we've both been doing that alone. It's the first time we've both done it. Eventually I passed Fonda Savio and pushed on towards Cite de Carpe, our final destination for the day. At this point, Will and I had been separated for some time and the light was beginning to fade. For that reason, Will decided to spend the night at Refugio Fonda Savio and meet me the following day at Refugio Vandelli. After 18 miles in distance and 11 hours of climbing, even getting into my bunk posed a serious challenge. I awoke to clear skies and a hearty breakfast. The day began with a smooth descent followed by a steep ascent to Vandelli and Lago de Sorapis. Unfortunately, a storm developed overnight, pushing our departure time the next morning by an hour or so. Eventually, the storm broke, and we headed off walking through moonlight landscapes toward what would be the most technical section of the Alta Via 4. The Via Ferrata began at the base of a near vertical wall, winding its way to the top.
closely, you can see Will making his way across this section. These mountains seem to engulf anybody that attempted to climb them. When we reached the summit, the storm returned. We quickly descended to what we thought was an next refugio, the bivouac Komiki. What I came across was a small red bothy and I carried on the trail thinking our actual refugio was just around the corner. I was wrong. As it turned out, there's a fair few refugios named after famed Italian climber Emilio Comichi, and the one we had booked was in a completely different part of the Dolomites. The rain continued to fall, and after a brief refueling, I made my way to the next refugio on the map, San Marco. A few very cold hours later, I arrived. Will had decided to see the storm out in Bivouac Comichi and ended up spending the night there. That evening, it was dinner for one at the Bothy, and Will dined out in crackers and a tin of pesto while washing that down with some rainwater. Tough times. The next morning, the skies were clear and the sun shining. It was our final day on the Altavia No. 4. After a brief ascent to Pietro Galassi, I made my way up a steep slope using Via Ferrata to get me to the top. particular mountain was spectacular. During my descent, the landscapes changed from loose rock and sharp peaks to lush woodland filled with wildflowers and bird life. Meanwhile, Will made his way towards the end of the trail, taking a different route down the mountain. In the distance, our final destination appeared, and it wouldn't be long till we would arrive in the beautiful mountain town of Puebla de Cador. We would spend the next three days in this area of Italy, savoring the Italian Dolomites the mountain range that seemed to erupt out of the horizon all around us. The Dolomites has to be one of the most spectacular places in the world, and we certainly encourage everyone and anyone to go and check them out.